Good morning, it's Amy Yamada here on Chat with Amy. So happy to have you here. And if you haven't met me yet, my name is Amy Yamada and I help entrepreneurs to deeply connect with themselves, their vision, and their ideal clients so that you can create the income and the impact that you've always wanted. So recently I was helping out uh, one of my clients with creating an online webinar and she, she had already created like an outline and she was like, yeah, I just want to go over this webinar with you. And so she was sharing with me what, you know, how she was going to start the webinar, how she was going to go into the content, how she was going to finish it out with a call to action. And I just said, okay, let's just go back to the beginning because what I noticed was that there, there, there were things that were lacking in it and I didn't see that that would be her setting herself up for success when it came to creating a webinar that would also not only make a difference for the people who are on the live webinar, but also convert some of those leads into actual clients that would want to talk to her. And I see this all the time. So I see this in email copywriting. I see this in people who are speaking from stages, people who are doing webinars, people who are doing summits. Like I just don't see, sometimes I'll, I'll see what they're putting out there and I'm like, oh, if I could just have the chance to have a conversation with them, I would tell them what's missing, which is, of course, what I speak into, which is the power of deep connection. So I thought that today would be a great opportunity to share with you three ways that you can create online con content that will attract not only clients, but your best clients. I know that when, when I was early on in my business, I wasn't really clear on who my best client even was. So even getting clear on that is super important. And, and I come back to this all the time because as I've evolved and my business has evolved, the people I attract have evolved too. And I'm much more clear in my messaging on who I'm even speaking to. So these are some things that have made a massive difference in terms of building a deep connection with my audience and then attracting amazing clients who I absolutely love working with. So yes, yeah, so happy to have you all here. And um, so yeah, so ha happy to like really dive in here with these three different ways. So. Feel free to take notes, of course. And um, I always think about how when I tune into Facebook Lives or when I hear a great speaker, when I take information from, this, from the talk, I, I do my best to implement what resonates with me right away because the sooner you implement, the better you are, right? So, okay, so we're gonna dive right in. So number one is to be your message. Like you get to embody and be your message and have consistency with your marketing messaging. So what do I mean by this? Um, for example, there are sound bites that I say all the time in that I know that if I consistently say these sound bites, then it's gonna land with my ideal clients and they're going to come to the surface. So you'll hear me say things like, words and messaging are my strength, like all the time. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel like a broken record. What's great about this, and this is even coming back from my radio days. I, I worked in the radio industry in promotions, advertising, and even some on-air work. And we would always talk about the power of frequency and consistency. So when you think about your own messaging, think about what are, if people were to talk about you, would they know how to describe what you do? Even beyond your title, right? So if I just said, hey, I'm a business coach, then that wouldn't be specific enough. I mean, business is a huge topic. So what I mean by that is like, really think about your, okay, what is your title? and then what are those sound bites that you would love for people to know? So you'll hear me saying things like words and messaging are my strength, the power of deep connection. And I'll describe how deep connection in your marketing messaging, deep connection with your vision, deep connection with your ideal clients. So I'm always speaking into the power of deep connection. And I also talk about heart centered sales conversations, making a difference, practicing generosity. So, so just think about like being your message, like embodying your message. And that way people will get to know the authentic you, and you're going to attract the right type of people who totally align with your message. I can't tell you how often I'll get emails from people or Facebook messages and they'll, they'll come to me because they've been watching my Facebook lives or they've been coming to my free trainings and they're like, Amy, I just feel a connection with you and I want to talk to you about business coaching. And it's, it's great because I know that already we have some kind of a connection there, right? Like they resonate with me. It's likely that on some level I will resonate with them. So, so yeah, so go ahead and pop in uh, the comments below. Like if you have a couple of sound bites, like bullet points of what you would like people to be talking about when they talk about you, what would those things be? Like I love that now when I talk to people, they actually reflect back to me the things that I say. Like I'll be on, the, on a strategy call with someone, like an enrollment conversation. 
They'll say, yeah, Amy, I know that words and messaging are your strength, or I know you're all about deeply connecting with your audience, and, or I know that you're really good at message, marketing messaging. And I'm like, oh, this is so great, because I remember early on in my business, people were like, okay, so what is it exactly that you do, or what do you specialize in? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know? So yeah, so think about this. Um, okay, so, okay, so I'm gonna uh, move on, and I'm gonna like, look at your comments uh, in a little bit. Okay, so. The second thing, oh, okay, I was gonna mention one more thing. Um, if you have a system, like if you're a coach and you have a system that you teach, it's good to be seeding and embedding that all the time. So for example, you, you'll hear me talking about Powerhouse Florida or Powerhouse California or my Powerhouse Mastermind, right? You'll also hear me talking about my Create Connect Offer system. Create Connect Offer is what I teach in every single thing that I do because I believe so much in that being the foundation of your business, creating your signature offering, connecting with your ideal clients and making offers. So do you see what I'm saying? Like it just, it, when, you, when you consistently and frequently say these things, then you're planting seeds in the minds of your ideal clients. So by the time they're like really ready to go, they are booking a call with you, they are warmed up and they are so excited. And, and the enrollment is so much easier because they're already enrolled in you. Does that make sense? Okay, so moving on to the second one. Okay, so the second way to create online content that attracts your best clients is to use the power of storytelling. The power of storytelling. Far too often, I will see entrepreneurs just focus on content. Like, I could easily come onto this Facebook Live and say, here are the three ways that you can create online content. Number one, you know, like, I would lose you in two seconds. You'd be like, oh my God, I'm bored, you know? <laughs> so I'm inserting stories and examples, my own, my own personal stories, so that it's going to create connection, right? Stories create connection and <laughs> such a cheesy saying, connection is currency. It's true though, when you really build a deep connection with your audience, then the right people will come to the surface. So, so sometimes I'll have clients say to me, but Amy, I have a hard time coming up with stories or Amy, I have so many stories, I don't know which ones to use when I put content out there. So in this case, I smile and say, it's okay. You know, you can actually carve out time to do some story journaling. So when I was at, um, some of you may know Pete Vargas, he's an excellent, excellent uh, individual, and he owns the company Advance Your Reach. And so I went to his Reach Live event, and I was actually um, in his speak off, there was a speaking competition, it was really fun. But at the actual conference, he actually had us do this story journaling, where he put on some like Anya music for about 10 minutes, and, and we just sat down and bullet pointed out like stories from our lives or stories that we know that we share often. Um, and for you recovering perfectionists like me, like when you're bullet pointing out stories, don't think that you have to have like New York Times bestselling titles. <laughs> like these are just your notes, right? So bullet point out the time I did this or when I ran a half marathon or when I uh, auditioned to be on Oprah, like I, there, these are things from my life, right? So, so I bullet pointed out things that were the stories of my life. And then now I even like to take it a step further and just think about like, what truly are the stories of your life in terms of the best moments, uh, the most painful moments? What are the biggest things you've overcome? And sometimes I'll hear entrepreneurs say, but, but I don't really have some big story where I've gone through some big tragedy. And just know that you don't have to have that kind of story to make a difference and to build a connection and attract clients. So once in a while, I will even think about a very simple story. Like, um, you know, like this morning I was, Taking it like this, I always think about my dog. <laughs> How many of you are dog lovers? I want to see some people who are dog lovers. So my dog Bella, who's actually sitting on the floor next to me right now. Um, so I may say something like, yeah, this morning I was walking um, down to the beach park in Juanita. So I live in Kirkland, which is in the Seattle area. And uh, I was walking Bella and I, I, stopped at, um, I stopped at the crosswalk, you know, and just waiting to cross the street to the, to the beach park. And this elderly gentleman, you know, stood next to me and and he kind of looked over and we said good morning and then he said hi to my dog. And, um, and I was thinking about how sometimes people just simply don't say hello. And it's interesting because we may be in such close proximity and clearly we're going to do the same thing, which is to go for a walk. And my experience of people these days is that they just don't connect. And I love building connections. So, so do you see what I'm saying? Like I'm sharing just a very like normal everyday story of walking my dog and having an interaction with a stranger. And then I can talk about the power of deep connection. So it doesn't have to be some big massive story. In fact, sometimes if it's not, it's better because everybody's telling a big hero's journey. And while I love the hero's journey, I also love 
you know, the ordinary stories that build connection. So just think about the stories of your life, but also think about what's the point that I'm trying to drive home? What's the message that I want to convey? And what is a story that I can tell that is going to help drive that point home and also help people get to the other side? So one thing that you can write down, I just came up with this the other day, so I was really excited <laughs> and helping my, my client with her talk. Uh, PSR, problem, solution, result, right? So this is where you can also use the power of storytelling by sharing a story of either your own story or a client that you've helped that had a problem, you helped provide the solution, and what was the result? PSR, okay? So I may share a story like, for example, um, at my Powerhouse Florida retreat. So when I say Powerhouse Florida or Powerhouse California, what I mean is that there's a, um, a group coaching program that also has a really intensive and awesome retreat. So, so for example, um, my client Kate, who came to Powerhouse Florida, which was in February, uh, she came to me because she was struggling with copywriting, her marketing messaging, and her sales conversations. And it's perfect because that's exactly what my Powerhouse Florida and my, my Powerhouse California are all about. So when she came to, you know, she attended the group coaching calls over the course of a series of weeks, and then she came to the retreat in Florida. And while we were there, she had this massive breakthrough in her messaging. She used my 11-step email copywriting formula, and it started to fill her calendar with sales calls. And then I also was speaking into handling objections. So I may not go into all those elements, but I may even just speak into one, like the 11 step email copywriting formula that, that I teach all my clients and how just by using that, she was able to start booking her calendar with sales calls because emails were now connecting and they were bringing to the surface her ideal clients. So now she has this template and this formula and framework and she's able to use it time and time and time again and generate thousands and thousands of dollars, you know? So, so do you see that problem, solution, result? So you can do that too. Um, and finally, um, for the third, I have my little post-its because I can get off topic easily. <laughs> my little post-its, very fancy, is to focus on specific topics. So earlier on, I made the mistake of having very broad topics. In fact, I did an online challenge once. I was just thinking about this. I did an online challenge. You know those like 10-day online challenges? And mine was like, 10-day um, challenge to boost your coaching business. And while it may sound great in terms of, yeah, I get to grow my coaching business, at least it was specific to coaches, um, but it was so broad and it was so packed that it didn't attract as many people as I would have hoped for. And I think it was, even though I don't believe in the word, it was overwhelming to people. It was like too much, right? So sp focusing on one specific topic when you're doing online content um, is better because then you're, you're speaking into one pain point or one area that people want to learn about. So one of my favorite examples in recent months um, is that I did a free Zoom training called how to, see there's Bella right there, a little cameo of her tail. Uh, is that I did a free live training call on how to handle sales objections with ease and flow. I even did a Facebook live chat with Amy on it once. Uh, but I did a longer training on that because it's such a popular topic. It's, it's not even just about the sales conversation. It's about one piece of it that I know is a huge pain point. So it's how to handle sales objections with ease and flow. So when you think about your own messaging, you can think about, okay, what is one thing? What is one problem that I solve? And maybe within that problem, what's like, a section of that problem that I solve and then use that for your, your ideas of the specific focus, right? So using a specific focus, that'll really provide a really good hook and know that I recognize that if you're, if you're on this call, on this Facebook Live, that it's very likely that you, if you're a coach or a service-based entrepreneur, that you do a lot of things for people or you teach a lot. Like there's so much more to what I teach beyond my Create Connect offer system. And I also know that this is their gateway into me. This is how people come to me, is through marketing messaging, deep connection, sales conversations. Like it's all about words and messaging. So just think about that as you're moving forward to creating online content, because this is where the magic happens. You're consistently putting out that messaging, you're using the power of storytelling, you're being specific, you're being yourself. That's another key thing, make sure you're being yourself and your best clients are gonna to rise to the surface because they're gonna be the ones who are following you and commenting and wanting to be a part of your world, about your, a part of your tribe and community. So, um, 
So speaking of which, a lot of people have been asking me, especially since Powerhouse Florida, they saw all of our social media and our videos that we're doing at this amazing location in Florida, when is the next Powerhouse experience? And we do have Powerhouse California coming up and people have been saying, do you still have spots left? We still do have a handful of spots left. And so the topics that I'm covering, even in these Facebook lives, like I have such a limited time, we're gonna be going so deep into each one of these. And um, it's a six week group coaching program with a two day retreat in beautiful Rancho Santa Fe, California. So that's why it's called Powerhouse California. Um, so it's about 30 minutes from San Diego. And um, it's just gonna be so much fun. So if this resonates with you, or if you've been curious about what this could even look like, then go ahead and go to powerhousecalifornia.com. If somebody could just pop it in the, the comments below, that'd be great. I can always do it later too. Uh, powerhousecalifornia.com and you can learn more about the experience itself as well as fill out the application so that you might be hanging out with us in late June. And, um, and of course, we're doing some things leading up to it and afterwards to make sure that you're covered. Um, yeah. Oh, so thank you. Look, it looks like I did it, but I didn't. That was magic. <laughs> Someone on my team. Thank you. Thank you, team. Um, okay. So I think I was going to also share. Oh, yes. The number one mistake people make, the one number one mistake entrepreneurs make when creating online content is that it's too content heavy. So I kind of seeded that before where it was like, if you just focus on teaching, 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 like I think a lot of us come from, you know, learning from our teachers and professors. And a lot of times those professors and teachers may have been really content heavy. Not all of them. I think the best teachers also do storytelling. But have you ever been in, um, like I went to the University of Washington, go Huskies. <laughs> and uh, I remember going to these huge lecture halls and there are like 700 people and there's the professor in the front and I'm just sitting like in there, whether I was in the front or the back, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm trying, trying to keep my eyes open. Like it's so boring, right? And just to keep the attention span of people it's just a, it's a human being condition to not have a long attention span, right? Maybe some of you who are really good at meditation or whatever. But anyway, you see what I'm saying, right? You want to make sure that it's not just too content heavy. And that's where embedding the storytelling and using pauses and using pacing of your, your words. Like some of my more advanced training is all around like tone of voice, nonverbal communication in your words and messaging. When to take a pause, what wording works. Like it's just, it's so fun. So... I hope this has been helpful. Um, so this is the part of Chat with Amy that I love to do a little Q&A. So I'm going to, oh, and one more thing. Okay, one more thing. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking me also about like, I need your help with marketing messaging or I need your help with knowing how to price and package my offerings. So my team and I, and I see Holly on here, she's part of my dream team. My team and I have decided that in the month of May, I'm actually going to be creating, drum roll please, <laughs> a May Marketing Bootcamp, and it's totally free. So some of you were with me during the holidays where I did holiday daily chat with Amy, so fun. I did a daily chat with Amy, weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific, and uh, it was from Thanksgiving to Christmas, or well, bringing it back in the form of a May Marketing Bootcamp. So every weekday in May, 9 a.m. Pacific, it's like chat with Amy every day. It's called May Marketing Bootcamp. So if you carve out, you know, about 20 minutes every Monday through Friday, I'm going to give you my best stuff. So you definitely should come to that. Yeah. Yay. Excited. Excited. So, okay. So I'm going to go back and see what questions have already come through. And then if you have a question for me about online content or even something else in your business that you're needing support with, like what's the number one thing I could help you with if we could solve a problem today and uh, let me help you. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, such great. Uh, okay, good morning, good morning. Okay, yes. So Kristen, Kristen says, this is where I struggle immensely, my messaging in a consistent way. Yeah, so Kristen, what you could do is um, like carve out some time even today, uh, grab a pen and notebook and just write down like what are some of the things you often talk about? Or another great way to look at this are, is um, what are your most frequently asked questions that you receive? So I didn't have my messaging totally dialed in at the beginning and it continues to evolve. And I'm always listening to what people are asking me about, right? So they're asking me about their messaging. They're asking me about how to attract my ideal clients. They're asking me about how to identify who my ideal client is, you know? So they're asking me about how to have a sales conversation that doesn't feel salesy or pushy. So as I'm leaning in and listening to my most ideal clients, then I'm hearing the same things over and over and over again and what they're struggling with. So, so you can just journal out some bullet points and then highlight the ones that are like your main 
like sound bites. And then once you do that, then use them everywhere you go. Even if you feel like a broken record, it's actually a good thing <laughs> because frequency and consistency, consistency works. That's why I know, I know radio is now a little old school because there's so many other ways to listen to music. Um, but if you still ever listen to the radio, you're driving around, whatever, uh, you'll sometimes hear the same commercial multiple times. You're like, gosh, this commercial keeps playing. It's because the ad campaign, the media buyers and the sales rep from the radio station who placed the, the ad campaign, they put it into the system. So based on all of their ratings, all of their statistics, they know their audience that there's a frequency of three. So that, for example, women between the ages of 35 and 54, you know, that have an income of this amount, like 100,000 plus, will hear this ad based on this time frame approximately 3.4 times. And they do that because they know that it takes that frequency for it to be embedded in someone's head. This is why it's better to be niche so that people keep hearing what it is you do. And then the other benefit is that not only are you letting the world know what you do, but everyone whose lives you've touched, if you've made a difference for them, they're also telling people what you do. So I know there are people who share my, my content with others. They'll click the share button, which by the way, if this has been helpful, I, I, I'm asking, I'm requesting that you click on the share button right now. And, um, and even put a little post. Like whenever you share something, it's best to put your own little message because if people don't know who I am, they're like, oh, why am I gonna watch this thing? You could say, yeah, she, you know, this was uh, um, Amy Modest chat with Amy on marketing message, or about creating online content. So, if you'd like to do that. Okay, uh, Diane says, empower women to get unstuck and become unstoppable. Awesome. Good morning, Wendy. Hi, Kelly. Uh, Kelly says, I inspire women to take control of their personal finances. Kelly, I love that. I love that. Like how many women struggle with their personal finances and budgeting? I mean, I can always get better at that myself. That's awesome. Um, Kristen, I always get what you do exactly. Thank you. It, it took a while to get here, so I appreciate that. Um, okay. Let's see. Just checking through. Um, Shay. Hey, Shay. Oh, it's so great to have you here. Shay says, assist speakers and coaches to run powerful and profitable events with grace and ease. Shay is awesome, by the way. She and I are collaborating on my dream big event coming soon to... A location to be determined. No, it's where it, it's in the works. We'll uh, announce it soon. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, scrolling, scrolling. Okay, so do you have any questions? Sorry, I'm like struggling with my scrolling. First world problems. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jasper. Hi, what a great name, Jasper. Okay, do you have a kick butt ongoing content strategy along with strategizing the email marketing message email sequence? Yes. Okay. And I, I'm just going to give a little shout out to Holly Tack, who's on here. Um, she's incredible. She's part of my dream team. She's also very entrepreneurial herself and uh, she's a great copywriter. She's great at marketing strategy. She's a blessing. <laughs> um, so one of the things that she and I have collaborated on in my world is, first of all, you know, with my Facebook lives, doing it once a week and then, you know, in May doing, doing it daily with my May marketing bootcamp. Um, coming up with the themes ahead of time that are congruent, this is a key word, congruent with what you offer. So everything that I share here, and then I'll be sharing in my May Marketing Bootcamp and at Powerhouse California, it, there's a consistency in the themes of what I do. So it's not like I'm teaching one thing that's way out here and then something, my offer is way out here. So congruency is key. So, so my point is we, we plan out the strategies. So we've got a calendar of all of my content and then we pre-promote it. So for those of you who have an email list or a social media following or both, then we pre-promote it to the list and to social media so that we're consistently like seeding exactly what I do and then inviting people to something that's for free. Another thing that we've done is um, I've been doing more free live training Zoom calls like with video and um, that's been really powerful too because when you, when you do those on, even if you do it once a month or or you know, once every couple of weeks, it's really powerful because you're being highly generous, you're giving people an idea of what it is you do, they're getting a taste of what you do, and then you can have a call to action you know, within, that, within that free training, remember? And make sure it's not just content, there's storytelling. In the storytelling, there can be testimonials, right? So I've given some of those throughout this. If you listen back, you'll see, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how many stories I tell in a Facebook Live because I don't always plan all the stories I'm gonna tell, it just naturally comes. 
Um, and then, yeah, and then making sure that you follow through with a call to action. So if you have something that you're offering, Jasper, make sure that you, you follow through and follow up with people. So if they show interest, then booking calls with those people, or if you have a sales team, booking calls with your sales team, and then, and then finding out if what you offer is going to help them get to where they want to go and then making the offer and then walking through resistance and you know, it goes on and on, but making sure that you have a good like follow up system. Okay. Hopefully that helps. And um, yeah, this is the stuff I do go deeper into. So if you are available, especially, okay, so for Powerhouse California, the dates are June 24th and 25th. It's a Sunday, Monday. And then we've got the group coaching around it uh, that's virtual. So if you are available for that, we're going to be going into to, to strategy, marketing strategy. So I'd love to see you there. Uh, let's see. Kristen was actually planning on writing today. And if I'm not super clear on how to describe what I actually do, um, yeah, so again, so you should, everyone needs to come to California. Um, we're going to be going into marketing messaging, like deep into marketing messaging, because far too often I hear people say, um, either they say just their title, like, oh, I'm a health coach, or they say they go into this long description of all the things they do, or maybe they're, they're esoteric. So they're like, yeah, I use astrology and this and that, and the other, which I love that stuff. But it's, if it's confusing, about what it is you do. Remember that a confused mind never buys. So I would, here's what I would do, Kristen, as a first step, is I would journal as if you were your ideal client. Like do like a, a journaling, like a day in the life of your ideal client. What's their pain point? What do they want? What's their desired result? Um, what, you know, what do they wish for the most? You know, what, you know, those types of things. What is their why? So really like deeply connect with your ideal client and journal as if you were them. And then you can think about um, how you can speak into that client and, and as far as what you do. Like, what is it? I do a whole training around this with, with marketing messaging. Um, if you look at my, my, even my past Facebook Lives, you may get a glimpse of that. And then, like I said, we're going to be going deep into this in Powerhouse California. So I would love, love, love for you to at least take a look at the application. And, uh, and then we can definitely help you. And this is something that I feel so strongly about because... To me, marketing, having a strong marketing message is the foundation of your business. If you don't, if you're not even able to tell people, and I'm just saying that to Kristen, like everybody, if you're not able to tell people what you do and why they should enroll in what you do, why it's going to help them, like if you can't powerfully recommend what you do, then this is where Powerhouse California totally makes sense. So some, some of you are totally dialed in here. You're fine, right? But if you're not, let me, let myself, my team fill that gap for you. Because beyond this, like, um, I don't know if we're going to do another one of the, the powerhouse, you know, California, Florida this year, because I've got a big three day event that we're planning. I've got my mastermind. So if this is something that you've even been thinking about, or if you're someone I've even talked to for the last six months and you're just like, yeah, I just don't know. Like life is now just decide, you know, seriously. And I know that sometimes the money thing comes up or the timing just, this is where you get to decide. Like I always know that there's always a way. I truly believe there's always a way. So anytime I have an opportunity in front of me where I'm like, all right, if I'm ever going to do this, I'm going to do it now and then find a way. So, um, so I hope that helps. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I'm just going to do a little, uh, yep. Time check. Okay. So, okay. Holly. Hey, Holly, what should we look at if we're sending a lead gen email and no calls are booked? Um, so I always like to, you know, when I, even when I preview it, like when I test it, let me back up for a moment. Whenever I write my emails, when I write my email copy that goes out to a, my list, then I write the email as if I were writing to one person and I even draft it up in my own personal email inbox. And the reason I do that is that I'm telling my subconscious mind that I'm actually only writing to one person. So that's just kind of a ahead of time thing. And then I, I send it, then I set it up. You know, I know that my company is shifting over to Infusionsoft, but I used to do an Aweber. Um, but I would set it up, send the test out, and I would see it and look at how it lands in my inbox. And I would just read through it. And I would look at every line in the email and just ask myself one question. Does this sound salesy? You know, like, or does this sound like a marketing email? Like, I know there might be a little bit of that in, in emails, but I, I do my best to really personally connect and um, make sure I'm really speaking into my ideal client. So if no calls are booked, first of all, I let it go. I don't beat myself up. You know, it's not, it's not like everything that I put up there, out there gets a massive response. 
So I'm kind to myself. I'm like, okay, I wonder, you know, and I'll look at the email. I'll ask myself, what do I think worked? What didn't work? I may ask a few of my colleagues or other entrepreneurs, like, when you look at this email, what do you think works and doesn't work? Sometimes emails are too long. Um, and sometimes they just don't connect deeply enough. But, and then I let it go and I move on because, you know, it's not, it's not a perfect journey. Awesome. Great questions, everyone. Hey, Megan. Uh, booking calls each week and I'm looking for more right now. Any tips on it to offer more? I have two offers right now. Yeah, so I am, this is something that I also, um, hmm, I never run out of leads. And I, I don't, I say that humbly because I feel like I'm, I'm constantly putting myself out there and I'm constantly and consistently noticing who's coming to the surface. So uh, if you feel like you've run out of leads, then to me that's saying that you're not putting in yourself, and I'm saying this with so much love, you're just not putting yourself out there enough. So um, you can go to networking events, meetup events, um, you can join Facebook groups, you can friend request people, you can start 20 conversations a night with people through Facebook Messenger. Um, there's, there's so much you can do even just from the comforts of your own home. And these are, I mean, I get so creative with this because I, I don't believe there's any one way to attract clients because when I look at my, my list of clients, um, they come from social media, like organic, organically through social media. They come from speaking engagements, both online and in person. Some do come from my email list, uh, but I'm just consistently putting myself out there and then connecting with people and then I get referrals. So, so it's just about really putting yourself out there consistently and frequently and also deciding like what are my top one, two and three ways to attract clients. So I do believe in list building, which, you know, Shanda Sumter is my amazing coach and she teaches list building. Um, I know there's other forms of list building than the model she teaches. So email list building is great. You can also list build by speaking on stages and then having a, a lead collection if you're, if you have permission to do that at the event you're speaking at. Um, so there's all sorts of ways to do it. Initially though, if you're like, I, I need to and get to attract clients now, then I, I put myself out there. I mean, if I had nothing, like say I, I could go back to scratch. I would create my signature offering. I would connect with people locally and online, but I would just I would just look at what are all the, the local events happening in the greater Seattle area that are for entrepreneurs, mostly women, you know, like I, most of my clients are women. And I would just hustle. Like I would go to everything, which is what I used to do when I was a sales rep for a magazine. I went to everything. I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't a person like, there, I shouldn't say there was not a person, but there wasn't like an event where I wouldn't go into it and at least run into 10 people I knew because I was totally in the networking scene. It still works. Like there's still nothing as powerful as the in-person experience. So I just say like, I even say to myself, like don't ever get lazy. Like <laughs> don't ever get lazy in terms of connecting with people and putting yourself out there. So um, I hope that helps. Um, okay, Jasper, do you, and I'll, I'll just do a couple more questions. Jasper, do you have an example of the content strategy calendar along with the steps to convert? Um, Jasper, I think it'd be great if either you got on a call with myself or Holly on my team. Actually, it'd be great for you to talk to Holly. She's great. Um, she can give you some ideas with that. If Holly, if you're open to it, as you're here too. Um, because we, we totally have created great content strategy. And then, um, and then, yes, there's always a nurture sequence afterwards. And for those of you who don't know what nurture sequence is, it's just like, how to nurture your leads after you do something of value that you put yourself out there. Um, so yeah, so it'd be great for, for you to connect either Holly or myself. So that'd be great. And then, cause it's, it's a much long, I'd be on Facebook live all day going through this with you. <laughs> you simply don't have the time. Uh, Holly says California events gonna be amazing. Yes. Powerhouse California is gonna be amazing. So I would love, love, love to see you there. All right. So it is that time, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and all your great questions. What a fun, fun morning. So Sending you all lots of love. Go to powerhousecalifornia.com. And in the month of May, I look forward to seeing you every single day for at least 20 minutes, 9 a.m. weekdays, the month of May for May Marketing Bootcamp. All right, sending you much love. Of course, I'll be on next Thursday as well. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.